One of the first things I did when I met Mike was he told me he had a rundown machine shop and that I was totally excited to see. Um, and that is that building right there. So we're gonna make our way over there. I'm gonna take you through that. And we're gonna go through the rest of the property, kind of give you a tour of this amazing collection. It's an old junkyard, old machine shop, old uh, all kinds of stuff. So this area may not look familiar to you, but right here is where the skid steer was sitting. And since we got the skid steer out, Mike has moved all this stuff. The trailer moved that way. This path, which is where the skid steer actually drug out down that, that aisle there, is here. And then he basically opened it up with the skid steer, moved a lot of stuff. They're, they're starting to clean up the property. And this is the starting point. So, and one thing I definitely to talk to Mike about is uh, this old Onan generator here in the, in the RV here. I'm gonna see about rescuing that. Starting here, we got the, the Hosfeld benders right there. So we're gonna try and save that. But there are just machines everywhere. Like that's an old brake lathe, some kind. So this is the machine shop. Right out front of it, Mike has a cat cylinder machine for taking apart hydraulic cylinders. And what it's used for is basically unscrewing them and removing them so you can replace the seals. This is a very, very expensive machine. Very, very useful, but very, very specific to what it does. So, and this is the hydraulic unit for it. As you can see, machine shop has kind of fallen in a little bit. <laughs> Understatement of the year. Right off the bat, we've got a Milwaukee Model K vertical milling machine. Look at that monster. A little vice. That thing is incredible. It's a Model K, number two vertical. Kearney and Trucker. I mean, and in here, there is tooling everywhere. I mean, arbors and collets and fly cutters and milling cutters and check this out. That's a, a Wilton bullet vise. What model is that? That is a Wilton C3 bullet vise. So there's the Wilton bullet vise. C3, big old monster screw there. Wow. Oh, check this out. That's a Whitney. Looks like it's an electric over hydraulic punch. So you got the punch here. This cylinder goes down, punches. So you put whatever you want in there and it punches holes. Wow, that is, that is cool. Model 751-000. Wow. Oh, and that's the hydraulic unit for it. I think. That's cool. On this table, we got another little Wilton bullet. That's a 
cool. A little Wilton Cadet. Milling Machine Vice. There's a Chaz Parker on a spindle, homemade spindle. That's awesome. Oh, check that out. Oh, man. That is a draw cut saw. That's a marvel. I have two draw cut saws, but this is a monster. That's a marvel number 6A. Holy mother. Jeez. Wow. So down there's the electric motor. Goes up to a set of pulleys over to a shaft where it's chain driven. Wow. Look at that. It was stopped mid cut. Whatever point in life, it's life that it died. It didn't even finish the cut. Crazy. Well, there's a, a Bucks magnetic drill press. That is awesome. Uh, so right here we've got a Cincinnati horizontal milling machine. Don't know what model it is. Look at look at the look what I'm stepping on. Look at cutters. Monster cutters. Just everywhere. It's a number 2MS. No, I'm sorry. It's a number 2MH. I mean, just check this out. I mean, that whole wall is folded this way. Blocks are heaving. Wow. Look at all these drills. If you know a good way to save these horizontal milling cutters and bring them back around, I know we could use evaporust, but I mean, are they savable? Is it worth the time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments because same with the drills. There's big old monster drills in there. I would think they'd be fine just because of the fact that they are high quality steel, but all right, right here we've got a Thompson surface grinder. Looks like it has a hydraulic bed. Just back and forth, yep. Hydraulic pump spindle. Here's your buttons. Start and stop. Wow, that's a beautiful machine. Yeah. Oh, here's another uh, another magnetic drill press. It's a Milwaukee. Forty-two thirty. Awesome. So we got some sort of a small lathe there. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see if this is a welder or something of some kind. I'm not sure. There's a stick welder there. There's an old post drill. There's a turntable. That's cool for a milling machine. That's what that uh, magnetic drill press was sitting on. There's a big uh, two caught or a two jaw chuck. Oh wow! Check out that press. That is a 50 ton OTC hydraulic press. Wow! Amazing. What a beautiful machine. Oh wow, this can even move. Oh wow. Wow, this even moves. 
back and forth. Wow, that's cool. Look at that. Oh man, that's a monster socket. I don't even know what size that is, but that's huge. Check that out. The roof fell in on that uh, that vice there. I don't know what. Looks like it's a Chaz Parker. Like a it spins inside the part of it. That's cool. Another big monster welding table there. That looks like a one inch thick plate on that thing. Who knows what else is on that table? And there's another big table. That's about a one inch plate. That's crazy. It didn't take too much to get some of this out of here. What else do you guys see that I'm missing? Leave it in the comments. Alright, so through here. Looks like we've got oh some engine lathes. What is this one? This one looks like a South Bend, maybe. Yep, South Bend. South Bend lathe. this one looks like it's a 19 inch swing this one is a is a leblond regal lathe 19 inch so that's a gear headed lathe meaning that in here is a bunch of gears it's not flat belt pulleys like that one is This one, this one's a the, the cone pulley lathe. And so the way that the, the chuck and the spindle is driven is with flat belt pulleys. When this one is driven by an electric motor that then drives gears, probably a chain right in there. All kinds of tool holders and drill bits and look at that look at the size of that center that is a monster dead center wow look at those steady rests those are some big old steady rests there's a big lathe dog down there cut off discs and grinding discs and all right, so that's the inside of the building. Looks like there's another set of doors here. Huh. There's a couple Miller welders. See that old car? Here's just a teaser. Check that car out. And that car, and that car, and that one. Check out that Dodge. Can you get much cooler than that? There's a Malibu. Another truck over there. Grand Prix model, model J. There's an old Lincoln cab. Looks like a big air compressor back there. Oh man, that truck is cool. I thought. There are motors everywhere. What is this thing? Interesting, some sort of a grinder or a pump or something. SE on car. There's one there, there's one on that pallet. 
So here's the side of the building that you can see just kind of caving in. All right, you gotta check this out. This whole wall caving in like it is, it's being held up by this vise. And this vise says old number 5165 UAW maybe? It looks like a Colombian, but if you look at this thing, it's been here so long that those have grown inside the building and up and through and around the vise. Check that out. And the building is being held up on this corner by the vise. Maybe I shouldn't be right here. Yeah, it'll be fine. What am I missing? Anything? Probably lots. There's so much here. Make our way over this way. Big work table. It's a nice table. And right there is a bridge port. So if you see, this is a round column Bridgeport milling machine. It's just kind of sitting here in the dirt. And I don't know if it's worth trying to save or not. Right next to it, looks like we got a Hobart welder. There are machines and cars everywhere. But trust me when I tell you, if you're into old cars, you're gonna wanna stick around. There are more old cars here than you could imagine, ranging from the 1940s all the way into the 90s. So there's a lot of scrap metal here that they're planning on getting rid of. We're in this trailer. Let's see what we see. See what we see in here. See what we find. I don't think there's a lot, but grinding stones and filters. Lots more grinding stones. Stones for honing cylinders. Bearings and electrical components. I've got a monster red e arc welder generator. So I get the diesel unit. D300K, three by three. There it is. Wow, doesn't look in terrible condition either. Check this out. This is a JLG lift. That's cool. Those monster counterweights. That's cool. So basically that's a man lift. You got the basket there and this telescope's out and lets you get out and reach things. Get out and touch somebody. Or something like that. Check that out, wow. That is a champion air compressor. I haven't even seen a sticker yet, but I know it's a champion. 
Oh man, nice Baldor motor. Five horsepower, three phase. That's a wider tank too. I think that might be a 120 gallon vertical. Thorns are killing me here. Let's see here. This is the tank sticker. 1981 tank. I mean, is that 200 gallon? Doesn't look like a 200 gallon, but I could be wrong. That'll run a lot of stuff. The cool compressor. An old Honda 3.5 horsepower motor on what looks to be maybe a generator. Not sure. All right. So a lot of people are asking about Mike's property and why it is the way it is. Well, it was a junkyard at one time, and he moved into the property. It's been in the family for a long time, and it's largely been the way it is because that's how it was for decades. Now, this piece of property here used to look the same. So what they're working on doing is cleaning up the junkyard to make it look like this. And so this is much cleaner. Obviously there's still some stuff along the edges here, but um, no intention of leaving everything. I mean, even when we brought the skids here, you couldn't get through there at all. There was hardly a path there. We drug the skid steer down all the way around up to here. And so things are changing here. Um, I definitely understand when people say all oh, that nice stuff's out in the woods and out in the weather. You can only do so much with, you know, a property like this when, when you inherit stuff like this. So, you know, when it comes right down to it, I just feel honored to be able to come out here and enjoy nature enjoy machines and enjoy uh, hanging out with Mike And this uh, John Deere up here is his personal skid steer. It's his, he owns that one. And so that one is not available. Apparently it looks like he's having issues with it again. Cab's up. So he cuts a lot of firewood for burning. The mulch comes from companies dumping it here and they use it kind of as gravel and whatnot just to keep the mud down. All right, so anybody out there that's worked on these John Deere's, it's a John Deere 325 wheeled skid steer, and Mike is having a problem where essentially the seat control or the, which is basically the, the sensor that senses if you're sitting in the seat or the seat belt sensor are both causing it not to work right is what he thinks. And so it, the motor runs great, but it doesn't want to move. Do you guys have any ideas? Would it be a seat control issue? He thinks maybe it's not getting power to that switch or that sensor. Um, if you've worked on these John Deere's and you know what to look for when it comes to the safeties on it, because it's it's a weird controller, he said, and it essentially doesn't doesn't work. You can't just wire past it or something, or maybe you can. If you know how to wire past it, then let me know. Definitely leave a comment because. Mike's had this unit and he needs to be able to use it, but obviously you can't use a machine that won't move. So let me know your thoughts and leave a comment down below. So right here, there's a four post car lift, which 
check that out. There's only three posts up. One, two, three. Let's see if we can get in there. There's the four posts. There's the frame right there. I don't know what brand it is. Let's see if we can find that out. There it is. So it's a forward brand. Four post car lift. I don't know what it's rated for. There's the fourth post right there. Fourth post, basically drive on and lift up. So this area has completely changed since I was here last. All this has been cleared out. It's a little bit more to do, but looks like he's got a tire machine in here. Coats 40-40. Only but a goodie changing tires and rims on cars and ATVs and whatever. Mike burns a lot of wood. And this is the wood stove that he uses for heating his house. There's some boat motors. An even rude. And um Mariner 15 horse. I wonder what's in this trailer. Old Singer sewing machine. Oh cool, check out that Skill brand three quarter inch drill. Looks like it's a model 543. Pretty cool. Right before the machine shop, this is his son's TL50 Takuchi. These Tox are awesome machines. Coming off the back of the shop here. Trail here. Look at that. More cutters for milling machines. Oh, check that out. A Chicago steel bending brake. Wow. That's really cool. That's an old break. Uh, look at that weighted ball there for the stable or for uh, using when you bend. One on this side too. Yeah, you can just see it right there. Oh sweet, a backhoe attachment right here. Here's an outrigger. There's the bucket right there. That's cool. Ah, oh, check this out. What is this, an international? Little international cub. Cool old tractor. Looks like it's got semi tires on it, semi rims. That's neat. Oh, no way. Do you see that? Oh, we got to go see that.
ほほほほほ。check it out。there's an old caterpillar wheel loader。Wow, look at this old girl. What is that thing? Caterpillar. It looks like it says 966 there. This is a non articulated wheel loader. So it doesn't twist in the middle. These back wheels turn. Very, very similar to uh, Old Red, the track loader. And there's the bucket right there. Here's the cat diesel. Wow, this is cool. Turbo. Cat, 966, wheel loader. That tire's got air, this one's low. Wow, pretty cool. Wouldn't that be a good pal for Old Red? That is a neat machine. Been sitting there a while. Over here we've got old Allison Chalmers backhoe loader. Currently it's got no rear rims or tires. D315 on that radiator there. Got a Chevy truck bed on it. <laughs> and that's sitting right next to sure what brand that is it's got to be something finger it's not just finger PW 350 this is uh these are outriggers pal finger so this is like a crane lift for booming pallets up onto roofs or into buildings or lots of other things so down on that end there's a set of forks that can be articulated the operator sits Right in that seat with the hydraulic controls there. That's cool. As you can see, Mike cuts a lot of wood. Oh, big monster pile there. Here we've got a Vermeer trencher M475. And it would have had a backhoe on this end. And then this is the trenching side of it. And we have a chain that runs over that that digs a trench. Pretty cool machine. Probably gonna say that a million times today. Hey, look, they've got a horse. Three point blade. There's the horse. Old brush cutters. Those are neat. 
There's the body to an old skid steer. So this we've got a really nice rigid pipe threading machine. A couple saddles for the horse, some gas engines. Old steel TS350 cut saw. There's a second one. And insulation. That's some nice insulation. And he's got hardware and tools. That's cool. That's an old stone brand plate compactor. For those of you that don't know, I ran a landscape design and construction business for about 10 years and these were even before my time. Good machines though. Really, not much can go wrong with them other than the motor going bad. Huh, interesting. Mike does a lot of work right in this area here. So there's actual power to some of these machines. He uses this working table a lot. That's a nice Colombian vice. He uses this pipe vice a lot. That bandsaw there. Old Powermatic. Craftsman drill press. Little Hobart welder. Another teaser. Check those cars out. This place is heaven for a guy like me. There's a scissor lift sitting on its side. Yeah. Scissor lift. Upright flying tiger. All right, can you see? Check out the Hudson Hornet. The plan is, I'm gonna continue showing you the bigger machines here in this video. And in video number two, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the cars. And trust me when I tell you it's gonna blow your mind. Check this out, is this a generator? Uh, International Harvester. It might be just the engine from a tractor. I think it is. Somebody has converted this thing into some sort of a, to run this shaft. I don't know what that's for. Look at this monster floor jack right here. Handles up here. That might be a manly jack. It is a manly jack. See? Right there. Manly. So if you watch some of my older videos, I restored an old manly jack. Not as big as that one is, but mine's less manly than that one. But. Yeah, those are well-made jacks. That one's actually got a, it's hydraulic. Mine was all mechanical. Look at that monster winch. That is cool. Tulsa winch, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow, that is amazing. Man, that would be cool to have. Have a, make something, mount that on something, be able to use, you could pull anything. There's an old skid steer. Series 1700 torque converter. Looks like it's got a, an old, old Ford motor. 
Interesting. And we've got a Clark forklift here. And that thing has uh, seen better days. And there's another forklift next to it. This here is a Greyhound bus flipped on its side. Big compressor tank right there. Here's another Clark forklift right next to that one. Interesting. Ooh, there's some more machines. There's a Wrecker flatbed. So it's got the, the winch there, big cable. Snow blowers, another uh, another scissor lift. Let me check that out. That is another trencher. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow, look at that. The Diggin' Dutchman, Vermeer. Wow, steel tracks right here. That's the auger for the trencher that would go underneath the bar. And then that's the trenching chain. Vermeer. Here's the other track. Let's see if we can find a model. Here we go. It's a Vermeer model T200 power ditcher. Power ditcher. Wow, that is a cool piece. That is a really cool machine. Small. Oh, it's got a blade back here too. I didn't notice that. Yeah, that has a blade for pushing the dirt back into the hole. That's neat. Wow. There's a tow behind compressor or generator. I'm not sure yet. That's a generator. That's the Actual electric side of it. There's a, it's got a Kohler, probably a gas engine in it. Not sure. Yeah, Hesco. Check it out. This is a 1960s Caterpillar 941 track loader. In one of the previous old red videos you saw, I walked around this and it was here at Mike's. And so this is a cool machine, but there's no motor. And so it's not worth a lot more than scrap, but it is cool. I'm gonna definitely try and come out and get some undercarriage parts for it and see if anything is usable. From what I know, the 941 definitely was similar to the 955 in the undercarriage. It's a five roller bottom frame. I think the, the track pads are skinnier than the 955, but some of the mechanisms for the idler and the tensioning, etc., should be compatible to it. See that orange cup right there? Mike told me that he used to sit here and hunt deer and that was uh, his coffee cup one morning and it has since just lived there. So I thought that was kind of funny. But this old cat will never run again. The best I can do is maybe save some parts from it. And then over here on this side is some sort of an old tractor. I don't know what brand it is. It's got a little uh, 
side flat belt pulley right there. But just sitting here and barely anything of it left. The head is off it. Still got the steering wheel though. Here's an Ingersoll Rand. I'm guessing air compressor. Check out those axles. Those things are massive. And then right behind the Ingersoll Rand, I think that's for uh, removing asphalt. A scarfacer or a scarfer or something along those lines. Look at those big old monster teeth. And I believe these two big wheels you see are the front of it because it's been cut up. There's the big motor to it. The like a General Motors, General Motors diesel. Big monster diesel. That's probably a fuel tank, other parts. Pretty crazy. It's amazing what's out here. Okay, I had to hack my way in here, but check this out. This is an Allison Chalmers HD 16 bulldozer. I don't know too much about it. It's been in here for quite some time. It's got the blade that attaches on the outside of the tracks. The undercarriage is actually in pretty good shape. Not terrible. As far as what I can see. There's the diesel. Allison Chalmers. Obviously you got your seat here. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. It's been out here for a long time. Ooh, check that out. There's a low boy trailer. Oh, heck yes. Wow. That is a big trailer. Okay, it's not the low boys that disconnect. It's a flatbed that you'd have ramps on the back. That's cool. At some point, I gotta figure out a way to move old red. That might be it right there. That'd make an awesome project. Restore that bad boy, get it back into working condition. Little backhoe bucket. And here's the other side of the HD 16. And I'll show you how long it's been out here. You ready? been out here so long you see that it's growing around the tracks and literally around the rollover fops rops on the back there that's crazy developed its own ecosystem as well. No idea if it works. Mike told me though, he pushed this in here and he pushed it in here using the Gale skid steer. And 
I just think that's crazy. That's a massive dozer. He said he once he got it started and running, he goes, he did not stop because he was not getting it started again. And then to turn it, he had to actually have somebody come over with a backhoe and, uh, or actually it was a mini excavator and help him turn it. But it's been sitting here for a long time. But this trailer, man. You have to look at the rubber, but they've all got tread. Oh, there's a semi too. What the heck? Sweet. <laughs> well, there's the rig right there. There's how we move old red. What is this old girl? She's a Kenworth. Big cab too. Oh, second area up there for sleeping. What is this thing? This is a an eight speed. Heard those are harder to drive than a ten or a sixteen or a ten or eleven, some of the bigger ones. Interesting. Wonder if this old girl runs. I'm sure, if it's all there, I could get it started. That'd be fun. So I kind of cleared out around this trailer a little bit, and this would be the perfect trailer to move old red move stuff like this dozer. Looks like it was last used in 04. But, I mean, the deck is rotten. There's some metal that needs patched. The ramps are garbage. The tires seem to be decent. But that would be awesome. And who knows on this semi here. Here's another big monster deck over trailer for a fifth wheel. Deck is pretty rotten. It need new wood, but doesn't look terrible. Here's another uh, machine that on Mike's property. This is a Vermeer stump grinder. So under there is the cutter and the teeth that grind stumps off. And he said it apparently needs a new bearing somewhere. Looks like it's got an old Wisconsin Motor BH4D. I don't know if that's a Vermeer number or a Wisconsin number. Yeah, Wisconsin engine, air cooled. So Vermeer 630B. Just a taste of what's to come in part two. See all those old cars? I'm gonna do a quick pan, and it is incredible. Stay tuned for part two. Where it will literally blow your 
mind. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I truly hope that you enjoyed part one of the tour at the old, the old machine shop, the old junkyard here. And, you know, places like this typically find one type of thing at a place, usually machine tools or cars or machinery or, you know, whatever it is. It's not the eclectic nature that this place is. This place has so many facets to it. I don't say this ever, but you should subscribe and you should click the notification button because the second part to this series is going to blow your mind. It's double what this is. It is going to be the tour of the junkyard part. And there are cars here from the 1930s all the way into the 90s. And most cars are probably 1970 and older. And we're not talking a couple. We're talking hundreds upon hundreds of cars. Beautiful old machines. And so I promise you, it will be worth coming back to watch. It's going to be an awesome part two. You know, if you enjoyed part one, and you enjoyed the machinery, please comment, let me know what you saw, let me know what you like, you know. I truly appreciate you coming along with the journey with me and, and kind of taking a look at this place. You know, I love finding places like this and at the end of the day, I try my best to save as much of it as I can. A lot of it will never get saved, but you know, here at Salvage Workshop, salvage in the name is for a reason because I enjoy salvaging old machines and old, old tools and, and you know, when it comes right down to it, this place is the kind of places I find. Thanks them. for joining me on this episode of Rescuing Old Iron. But don't forget, part two will be coming very soon. You guys have a good one.